right, and welcome to my dive closet. So this is my closet where I keep most of my dive equipment. Um, up here I have my dry suit, which I'm not gonna take out for you, but that's a video for another day. I have some bags, which I transport my dive gear in. Over here, my mask area. These are the two masks I currently have just in the closet. For so this is a Cressy mask, which is the GoPro mask. I'm a big fan of this one. Uh, however, I'm just not really filming much with the GoPro on my head. And then this is my partner's Aqualung Sphera. So um, I also have some a spare Boche Max Lust mask, which I'm a big fan of as well. And I'm just keeping this for when I need. Since I live rurally, it's sometimes hard for me to get dive equipment. So in case something breaks, I like to just have one spare uh, just to make sure I'm all good. Now in here as well, dive torches. So I have my Orca torch, which needs to be charged. Uh, this is one of the big video lights. All of my like spare underwater torches. I have this torch. I have some old GoPros as well as uh, mask straps, watch straps, just spare bits and pieces that I may need. Behind there, I have all of my old dive slates. Now, these slates I don't tend to use much anymore just because I'm not teaching diving, but I have a whole heap here with everything from dive master requirements, rescue scenarios, advanced open water slates. I can go through all my slates one day if you're interested. These Half of these are the Patty official ones. So you can see this is like slightly yellowed Patty open water slate, which just tells you all the things that you need to do on each of your open water dives. So water skills assessments, dive flexible skills and such. And on the back, you have my little cheat sheet to myself, which I had from when I was teaching of all the things I needed to include. Here I have my collection of sunscreens as well as baby shampoo. In terms of clearing your mask, you, um, but I like using baby shampoo. It's no tears. This one is also cruelty free, vegan. So uh, it was on special. So I bought one of these that you go store. Clear my mask, stop it from fogging. Make sense? There's also a bunch of sunscreens here. It's taken us a long time to find sunscreen that is both reef safe and actually doesn't cause breakouts on the skin. But we finally are happy with the sun butter sunscreen. It's currently packed away in our dive bag, but that's the one I use most of the time. So my partner uh, loves to spearfish, so we have a bunch of spare rubbers that we keep in here. So I'm trying to keep them out of the sun. So that's kind of all of my little bits and bobs. Now we can move on to the actual dive equipment. Um, I have my Hydros Pro BCD that I have had now for several years. I'm a big fan of this one. It has traveled the world with me. I used to think it was really lightweight, but now holding it, I feel like it's quite heavy actually. But I love the bright pink pockets. I love that it's made from this super durable material. It's got heaps of clips, which has been one of my biggest must haves on any dive trip. Make sure I have plenty of clips to attach all my bits and pieces to it. And then of course, my shaker to keep my students knowing where I am. Two other sets of BCDs, which we both bought secondhand. Now these BCDs are my partners slash any friends which come diving with us. So it's good to have some spare gear. We have a little pony bottle, uh, which we bring on most of our trips as well. Now this is the one we actually fill up every year, make sure it's hydrostatically tested and everything. But we have this in case the anchor gets stuck on our boat if we're just going for a day of free diving. But it's a really just great option to have. So I should actually bring this with me. We'll find a spot for it later. Okay. Now down at the bottom, I'll show you in a little bit, I have all my regulators. So again, I have a couple of regulators I've had since 2014 or so that I've been teaching with mostly. And then I have a couple of secondhand ones as well. Basket here, which has a bunch of tape as well as spare mask straps. Again, mask straps are really helpful. I personally love these kinds of mask straps. They're perfect for scuba diving as they don't rip out all of your hair. However, for free diving, because you're going up and down so much, the pressure changes considerably, making these kind of wear out. I would not recommend getting these if you lend out your masks a lot, but if you have 
one personal one that you use all the time and you don't have to change the size, that's a great option to have. Now in terms of the wetsuits, this is something I've wanted to do for a long time, but just a quick little wetsuit tour of what I have in the cupboard. I have a few of these rashies. Now this is a rashie I got second hand. I think my partner got it somewhere actually at op shops, second hand stores. We always look out for these. They're just good to have to cover uh, our friends if they come out on the boat with us. They provide sun protection and uh, some thermal protection as well as jellyfish sting protection. So we have a bunch of these in a different collection of sizes and um, long sleeves, short sleeves just to have for our friends if they come out diving with us. If it gets a little bit colder, uh, frog skins or shark skins. Now these are thermal underlayers. Adrenaline one, which is a pretty good basic one. This one was gifted to us, again, secondhand. Uh, layering, if you get colder in the winter, you can add this to your three millimeter wetsuit. Uh, it has a hood where a lot of your heat actually leaves. So having a hood on your little thermal undergarment will really elevate your wetsuit from being a three millimeter to significantly warmer. Also really easy to find secondhand. Now, these are me and my partner's personal thermal ones that we use every winter. I have this frog skin that I'm absolutely obsessed with. I pair this with my 3.5 millimeter salt wetsuit and I can dive in the cold waters of southern Western Australia. Now, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I'm an absolute wuss when it comes to uh, diving. I get really cold, so this is absolutely a lifesaver. The inside is really nice and fluffy, so this adds an extra layer of insulation. It makes sure that you're really toasty, it's really comfortable, it's also quick drying, and it stops a lot of the wind coming through. So it takes away wind chill, it makes sure that you are warmer and it's really comfortable. So I like the long sleeve uh, because I can just put it underneath my 3.5 millimeter salt water, which already has a hood, so I don't have to worry about that. Now my partner has this nth degree, which um, according to some is better quality. It is a little bit more expensive, but as you can see, it also has that really fleecy inside lining. Uh, he likes this one because again, he can just put it underneath his wetsuit and it just keeps the core of his body warm. Protects the most important parts of your body and great for layering. So these ones are absolute must-haves for any time I go diving. My 3.5 millimeter um, bottoms of my salt wetsuit here in the cupboard and that's because I'm currently only diving with the top. It's still warm here, it's still summer in Australia, the water is about 26, 27 degrees so I don't need to have my bottom half. And then when it gets even colder or if I dive in a more colder climate then I'll be pairing that with my frog skin to have an overall. But this one's absolutely fantastic. I do love two pieces because you can mix and match and combine for exactly what temperature you need. However, my partner does not like the long johns. He prefers when it's just shorts because it's just easier to take on and off. Well, this, if you do need to go to the toilet um, and you don't want to pee in your wetsuit, which they say there's two types of people who either pee in their wetsuits or they lie. But if you do want to pee in this wetsuit, you have to take off the top and then you have to take off the bottoms. While if it's just like high-waisted pants, you can just flip the top up and then pull your pants down and you're good to go. Now the next wetsuit we have is this shorty. Again, we purchased this one secondhand. It's just a hydro stretch. What brand? I think this is actually a surfing wetsuit or an old school scuba wetsuit. If you're looking uh, in a second hand shop for what's actually good quality, you want to feel the thickness. Uh, you will find that after a lot of diving, wetsuits become compressed, therefore they're actually less able to keep the water in. And you're also looking for cracks, things like this. So this is a second hand wetsuit. So you kind of expect to have some of these, which would happen after a couple of years. And then lastly, you want to check the zips. So as you can see, this one's breaking a little bit, but it still goes all the way up. So there's minimal water intake over here. I'm not a big fan of shorties just because then you can get awkward leg tan lines as well and then it has the whole bottom of your leg exposed to the elements. So next wetsuit. This is a Scuba Pro Thermal 
Pyroflex. This one I actually got gifted by Scuba Pro back when I worked uh, at a Scuba Pro shop about in 2014 and they asked me to product test this. Since I was teaching diving at that point and I was in the water multiple times a week, uh, they really wanted to see how this would hold up. So it's kind of like our frog skins that I was talking about before, but a full body one. You can still see there's some thermal lining. Almost 10 years is definitely a lot more stretched out. It is a really good thermal insulation. It's also great for layering, so you can combine this underneath one of your neoprene wetsuits just as an extra layer of comfort. Diving in this in various tropical waters, my mom wore it when we went to Africa, she absolutely loved it. It's extremely flattering, which I loved about it. It was very stretchy, hugged you in the right places, and kept you nice and warm. So I'm a big fan. It is pretty worn out. Full body thermal protection, protection from the stingers, and you know, for people who don't dive as often as I do, it's not really that big of a deal, but you can see it's definitely getting a little worn. I have this. This is a three millimeter uh, wetsuit. I think this is actually mine. I think someone forgot this on the boat and now it's in the dive cupboard for anyone who may need to use it. But yeah, if this is yours, let me know because I'd love to return it to you. Old school, secondhand, three millimeter wetsuit. It's definitely seen better days. Last but not least, I have this five millimeter Adreno wetsuit, which I did a whole video about. Adreno was kind enough to gift this one to me and I absolutely love it. The only downside of this one is when I originally got it, I was a little bit heavier. So since I've lost a bit of weight, now it's a bit big on me, therefore it lets a lot of water in. Wetsuits work is it stops as much water movement coming in and out of your wetsuit. And then the water that stays between the wetsuit and your body, your body heats up from its natural thermal properties. And then that keeps the rest of your body warm. Now, since this one's a bit big on me I just have fresh water rushing in and out through my neck hole and hand holes therefore it's just not working as well as it should but it is a fantastic scuba diving wetsuit five millimeters so perfect for winter here in Australia or for a lot of people they're fine with diving in something like this in Europe it has that fleece internal lining that I talked about before but um, I still have it here because you never know, weights change, I might regain the weight or I might have friends which might be able to use this, but it is a really good quality wetsuit. Um, as you can see through the thick thickness and just looking for creatures in tide pools where you certainly get smashed up on rocks because you're climbing over them and if a wave comes, you know, you fall onto a rock. And I always felt very safe because this is very thick and solid material. Uh, I also have some more dive weights down there located. We have spare weight belts and then of course this dive cupboard does not feature the equipment I wear day to day. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about all of this dive equipment because I've been kind of talking about doing a tour of my dive cupboard for a little while. I still haven't added the... I have a bunch of knives and socks and booties as well. Um, so yeah, let me know if there's anything in particular you're interested in seeing. I'm more than happy to share kind of my journey. But you can see, a lot of it is secondhand. Oh yeah, of course. I also have my famous Scuba Pro Sea Wing Novas. Now you can see they've definitely had their wear and tear. This is my second pair of pink ones. I had one from 2014 to about 2018, and then I bought this second set in 2018. Honestly, Scuba Pro, to this day, I just think they're the pinnacle of dive engineering in terms of the materials they use. That's very long-lasting. I also know they've gone a lot towards eco-friendly initiatives, so I highly recommend if you do want to invest in good quality scuba gear, go with Scuba Pro. They offer lifetime warranties, uh, I absolutely love these, as you can tell from the many, many photos and footage. I have a ironic club underwater hockey here. If you want a video about underwater hockey, would love to make one for you. So most of my other fins and spare masks are all there, so people who don't have equipment can just come on up and try underwater hockey. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'm going to close up this dive cupboard and get ready to go on a dive adventure.